Hello, just wanted to give a little overview of IV fluids that we use in pre-hospital care, but we've got to talk about a couple of other things first. Most of the fluid that we have is in the intracellular space of our body, so about 60% of our fluid is inside of our cells. The other 40% is extracellular, with the majority of that being in the intravascular space, and then some of it also in the interstitial space. Intervascular space is the stuff that's in our blood vessels. The interstitial space is the third space between the cells. When we look at fluids, we like to compare concentrations or the amount of solute dissolved in the solution. If we have an equal amount, it is called an isotonic solution. So here the blue is the same number as the red, so comparing these two solutions, they are isotonic. Now, if the concentration changes, we can have a hypertonic and a hypotonic. The hypertonic has much more dissolved in it than the hypotonic. So the side with the blue is much more hypotonic, I'm correction, hypertonic than compared to the red. The red is hypotonic. If we take a red blood cell and we put it in an isotonic solution, not much should happen. Equal amounts of water would flow in and out of the red blood cell. If we take a red blood cell and put it in a hypotonic solution, more fluid would move inside the red blood cell causing it to swell and possibly burst. If we take a red blood cell and put it in a hypertonic solution, it will cause it to shrivel up. This is because all of the fluid would be drawn out of the red blood cell. The solutions that we use pre-hospitally are divided into three basic types. The first one are crystalloids, and these are usually sodium chloride, lactated ringers, or D5W, and they are a salt dissolved into water. So it would be like sodium chloride dissolved into water would be normal saline, or our 0.9% sodium chloride solution. Colloid solutions are solutions that have large proteins or large molecules in them. These are to try to keep more of the fluid inside the intravascular space. With crystalloids, when you administer them, about two-thirds of it will go to the interstitial space. Blood products, while not typically started in the field, may be used as we transfer a patient from hospital A to hospital B, and these are the best replacements. Of the crystalloids that we have, sodium chloride is the most commonly used one, we find that we can mix almost any medication with it without it precipitating out. It has 0.9% sodium chloride, or 9 grams in 100 milliliters. This gives you a lot of sodium and a lot of chloride, and there is some concern now that if we give large boluses of this, that we can upset the electrolyte balance of the body and make them hypernatremic, meaning they have too much sodium in them. Lactated ringers is a, a good alternative. It's been around for a long time. We feel it more closely matches blood than sodium chloride. As you can see with the chemicals in it, it has a little bit less sodium than the normal saline. Um, it has a few other things like potassium and calcium in it. So this is one that is a, a good alternative to sodium chloride. Lastly, we have D5W, 5% dextrose solution. And with this solution, we have about 5 grams of dextrose in 100 milliliters of water. So this is basically sugar water. And we use this if we have somebody that is hypoglycemic or needs a maintenance infusion to maintain the glucose levels in their blood as, as they're maybe fighting an infection or long-term recovery of something. So we don't use this one much pre-hospitally. Whenever we have an IV going, uh, primarily if we have blood being infused, there's a possibility of having the patient have an adverse reaction. And oftentimes this is due to an incompatibility between the blood of the donor and the blood of the patient. And we're all familiar with the ABO blood types and the RH positive and negative, but there's also several other minor variations or differences between the blood, and these can cause the reactions. So if you're taking a patient from hospital A to hospital B, and you notice that they're starting to have fevers, chills, hives, low blood pressure, headache, nausea, vomiting, it's probably an adverse reaction or a hemolytic reaction to the blood. And we need to then stop the blood immediately, change out the tubing, in fact, just take everything out except for the IV hub, and have a fresh bag of saline, fresh tubing, spike your bag, clear the tubing, 
hook that up to your IV and infuse that to maintain your blood pressure. Keep up with the blood that was being transfused into the patient because oftentimes at the hospital they will want to look at that and see if there was something wrong with the blood or if there was something wrong with the testing. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or ask me in class. Thank you.